daily life, work, and community obligations with the rigors of study, and sometimes to find ways to continue to study through quite chaotic changes in personal circumstances. And there are still others for whom education has been a dream long deferred in order to fulfill responsibilities to others or because no feasible opportunity seemed ever to open up. For all here, the completion of a degree has been an act of promise keeping. And for each, there has been a circle of support. In the university, there have been instructors and advisors, people who helped by pointing to goals and standards that seemed at first too high, impossible even but who supported and mentored and sometimes cajoled their achievement. There are parents and grandparents and spouses who supported, encouraged, wrote checks from time to time, and who prayed. And employers who subsidized tuition and supervisors who found it possible to let up a bit during finals week. And there are boys and girls here in this audience who knew that mom or dad had to balance participation in school sports or other youth activities with their own university study. To these young people, let me say, especially, I hope you have come to understand that the overriding message is how important education is for everyone, including each of you. All these and still others who share in these degree achievements today are here present, and on behalf of our graduates, I want to thank you all. And so we have come here to San Antonio, some of you perhaps for the first time, to celebrate. But where have you come? Indeed, where as a member of the Lake community have you been? Yesterday, some of you from Houston and Dallas who came for our baccalaureate and graduate liturgies saw our core campus for the first time. Clearly, the architecture, imagery, iconography, statuary, and stained glass windows of the lake here in San Antonio are strikingly different from the environments in Houston and in Dallas. And even if you have spent your days or weekends here in San Antonio coming quickly in the back door of the science building or the side door of Providence Hall, perhaps you haven't spent much time thinking about where you've been. The real point, I think, is that the vision and the sensibility that build buildings here at the lake are what has motivated our outreach to Dallas and to Houston, and that our extended community is grounded by a singular vision. Simply put, we are a Catholic institution sponsored by the Congregation of Divine Providence. We welcome people of all faith traditions and people of uncertain faith people who want to better their lives and those of their families and communities through education. Our vision affirms a caring God, a God of providence, who is attentive to the needs of each person. And our work is, as we can, similarly to be attentive to individual needs. In keeping with our roots, we affirm the transforming power of education. We then, in that spirit, shape and seek to shape educational programs that meet individual needs. And so it has been that in keeping with our core vision and noting the learning needs of adults, the university expanded now 20 years ago, first with the weekend college here in San Antonio, and then noting needs still unmet by others in Dallas and Houston, going out to establish those sites where solid partnerships with presidents, chancellors, and community college trustees makes possible the work we do in those cities. Among our founders, now our sponsors, there is a notion that may explain in part why we gather here for a single commencement, and that is the notion of homecoming. Having gone out in small groups to minister and to teach, the early sisters would come home to share to celebrate and to renew themselves. We want you then to think of the lake as home and this commencement as a homecoming, even if you've never been here before. We hope whether the next months, 
will mean still further study, or a first job, or a fifth promotion. That you will take from the spirit of this place a sense of self-worth and a sense of calling, so as to place at the disposal of others the perspectives and skills and leadership in service that are the promise of your education here. I said a moment ago that the Lake is committed to the transforming power of education and to encouraging Lake students to make a difference for good in the communities they call home. In that spirit, I want especially to welcome our speaker this morning. The outline of Hope Andrade's life and career are in your program. Hope Andrade's business is about the alleviation of human need. Entrepreneurship that does well by doing good, specifically in several small businesses that place licensed healthcare professionals and paraprofessionals in places where they are needed most. These ventures have had a success that have earned her a variety of professional honors. Her leadership also has been about bringing others along, others in small business supported by the encouragement, networking, and training programs of the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, which she chairs in the current year, and of the San Antonio Greater Chamber of Commerce, of which she is vice chair. She has been a role model and supporter of people seeking to have impact in the world, including women in business and the professions. In Hope and Body, we honor sustaining leadership and innovate and initiative for innovation. Thank you, President Mahoney, for that warm and kind introduction. Good morning, honored graduates, faculty, parents and families, friends and distinguished guests. This is just not an honor what a great personal pleasure for me to join you today to pay tribute to these graduates and to celebrate their splendid achievements, for they are the hope and future of our country and our people. I am a business and community leader, as the introduction so generously described me, and I would like to talk to you from this framework as you begin your journey toward becoming our leaders. When I speak about leadership, I am reminded of a story about a student applying to a prestigious university. A section of the university's application form was directed to the applying student's parents. One question on the form asked, do you consider your child to be a leader or a follower? After much deliberation, the father wrote, that although his son was bright, an individual, and creative, he was really more of a follower than a leader. A few weeks later, an acceptance letter arrived from the admissions dean welcoming the student. In the letter, the dean stated, we believe that your son will fit in nicely in our university, as he will be the only follower in a class of 412 leaders. <laughs> no doubt there are some follow followers here today, and those of us who have had, as William Shakespeare said, greatness thrust upon them are grateful for men and women who choose to work behind instead of, instead of in front of the lights. Without you, nothing would ever be accomplished. Remember that before you can be a leader, you must spend time following. A great Texan, Sam Rayburn, former speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives said, you cannot be a leader and ask other people to follow you unless you have learned how to follow too. Today, I am so sure that many of you will be tomorrow's leaders that I believe in 10 years or less, one of you will be standing where I am. And you will see faces filled with excitement, expectation, relief, and even looks of surprise that they made it. 